everyone today we will be discussing anti arrhythmic drugs and our main focus will be on class 1 and class 3 anti arrhythmics now let's quickly see the classification of anti arrhythmics see class 1 are sodium channel blockers class 2 anti arrhythmic are beta blockers class 3 are potassium channel blockers and class 4 are calcium channel blocker now here is a simplified rule see class 1 and class 3 in means class 1 and class 3 anti arrhythmic they work more on ventricular arrhythmia and atrial arrhythmia okay means arrhythmia arising from ventricular myocytes and class 2 and class 4 anti arrhythmic they work more on sa node and av node obviously this is a simplified rule and it does not apply to all the situation but uh, it is good enough to get an overview so let's try to understand first the action potential graph for the ventricular myocyte This is for ventricular myocyte. Obviously, the action potential graph for uh, SA node and AV node is different. So it's for ventricular myocytes. Now see, the first phase is phase zero, then comes phase one, then phase two, and phase three. Now phase zero is the phase during which depolarization occurs. Okay, and phase three is the phase where repolarization occurs. Okay, so see. in depolarization there is sodium influx okay now whenever sodium comes inside the cell the positive charge in the cell will increase so the see the graph it moves towards the positive charge okay and whenever potassium leaves the cell okay the negative charge in the cell increases means there is net negative charge and thus during repolarization the graph moves towards the negative charge so this is about depolarization and repolarization and we mainly we will mainly focus on phase 0 and phase 3 only because we are discussing about sodium channel blockers and potassium channel blockers now the term that we need to understand for understanding the action potential graph is first c it is action potential duration what is action potential duration it is the duration from the beginning from the beginning of depolarization till the end of repolarization again it is the duration from beginning of depolarization till the end of repolarization this is action potential duration okay, action potential duration now what is effective refractory period c effectory re effective refractory period includes phase 0 phase 1 phase 2 and some part of phase 3 okay so see phase 0 phase 1 phase 2 and some part of phase 3 let's say till here okay so this is effective refractory period and what occurs in effective refractory period see during effective refractory period the sodium channels are inactive okay and as the sodium channels are inactive we cannot produce an extra action potential during this period okay during effective refractory period extra action potential cannot be generated so that was about action potential duration and uh, effective refractory period now let's try to compare the graph means the action potential graph with ecg see what basically is difference between both the action potential graph is for single cardiomyocyte single ventricular myocyte while ecg is for whole ventricle okay so that's the difference now let's try to understand see what is phase 0 see phase 0 is depolarization of the ventricle okay depolarization of the ventricular myocyte so on ecg the depolarization of ventricle is represented by qrs complex okay so phase 0 is equivalent to qrs complex let's write it here phase 0 is equivalent to qrs complex on ecg now the repolarization that is phase 3 in the action potential graph so the repolarization in the ecg means repolarization of ventricle in ecg is t wave okay so phase 3 is equivalent to t wave okay i hope it's clear see depolarization that is phase 0 is equivalent to qrs complex and repolarization that is phase 3 is t wave now see what is qt interval qt interval starts with the depolarization of ventricle and ends at the repo means ending of repolarization of the ventricle again from beginning of depolarization till the end of repolarization of ventricle this is qt interval okay qt interval so see action potential duration what was it 
from the beginning of depolarization till the end of repolarization and QT interval is the same thing so action potential duration is equivalent to or we can say is equal to but write it here is equivalent to QT interval okay so see the main thing that you sh should know from the graph of uh, ventricular depolarization means the ventricular action potential is that phase 0 is QRS complex phase 3 is T wave action potential duration is QT interval so if any drug that affects the action potential duration will definitely affect the QT interval also one more thing okay see so let's try to understand uh, this thing see uh, the first graph here shown here is from the uh, sodium channel blockers see okay sodium channel blockers the drug in sodium channel blocker they are divided into 1a 1b and 1c okay and we will see graph of all of these drugs see first let's see about 1a it will affect the phase 0 obviously it is a sodium channel blocker so it will affect the phase 0 this is the phase 0 after giving the drug see the slope decreases okay the slope of phase 0 is decreasing because this drug is blocking the sodium channel so it is taking more time for the depolarization to occur so as we said that anything that affect the phase 0 will affect the QRS so here the phase 0 is taking more time see previously it was very quick now it is taking more time so we will see widening of QRS complex see because anything that increases the time required for phase 0 to complete will cause widening of QRS because both correspond to each other now also see the phase 3 the phase 3 is also prolonged because class 1 is although it is sodium channel blocker it has some potassium channel blocking activity although it is a sodium channel blocker it has some potassium channel blocking activity that's why it is affecting the phase 3 okay in phase 3 there is potassium efflux so here it is also affecting the phase 3 and that's why see the action potential duration has increased from here till here previously it was still here but now it's here so see the action potential duration has increased and as the action potential duration has increased the QT interval is prolonged again if you if you know how to compare the action potential graph with the ECG then this will be really easy here the action potential duration is increased so the QT interval is also prolonged also the slope of the phase 0 increases sorry decreases so the QRS complex is widened now let's move to 1B see in 1B the effect see it, it also decreases the slope of phase 0 but the effect is less less than that in 1A okay and here the action potential duration is decreasing actually we do not need to go into detail about its effect on means the effect of class 1B on the potassium channels but just simply remember that here the action potential duration is decreasing so it means the QT interval is decreased okay that's what we need to know also here the slope slope is decreasing so there will be widening of QRS wide QRS okay so any see all, all see class 1A or class 1B or class 1C all of them will affect the phase 0 and that's why all of them will widen the QRS complex okay the QRS complex will be wide this is a rule for class 1A class 1B and class 1C now here in class 1C there is no change in the action potential duration see the action potential duration remains the same even after giving the drug that's why if the action potential duration is same there will be no change in QT interval okay QT interval will also remain the same so let's compare 1A 1B and 1C here the QT interval is prolonged okay and action potential duration is prolonged here action potential duration is decreased and QT interval is also decreased and here there is no change in action potential duration as well as QT interval while the QRS complex will be wide after the use of 1A, 1B or 1C so this is the main thing that you need to know QRS complex, QT interval, action potential duration okay now let's move to class 3 potassium channel blocker now obviously it is potassium channel blocker so it will affect the phase 
3 okay phase 3 of the action potential graph before giving the drug it was this dark line now after the use of drug it is dashed line so see what is what is the change here the action potential duration has increased see action potential duration is increased now as we know that action potential duration if it increases what will be the effect of QT interval QT interval will also increase so that's the effect of potassium channel blocker now here there is no effect on phase 0 so there will be no effect on the QRS complex so this was about the graphs okay the main thing again is to compare the graph for action potential with the ECG if you know that then it will be really easy to understand all the concept and also to answer the question on exam now let's try to understand some difficult terms or or at least they were difficult for me when I, I was preparing so see the uh, already we already discussed action potential duration okay see you know noted one thing see out of all these drug which drugs are increasing the action potential duration all any drug that is affecting the potassium channel will increase the action potential duration again so to simply answer the question if the drug will increase the action potential duration or not you should know if the drug is working on the potassium channel or not if the drug is working on the potassium channel it will increase the action potential duration if it is not working on the potassium channels then it will not increase the action potential duration so which drugs work on the potassium channels obviously class 3 and also class 1a to some extent okay although class 1a mainly acts on the sodium channel but it also acts on the potassium channel blockers oh, sorry potassium channel and that's why it is increasing the action potential duration and thus it will increase the QT interval we already discussed about ERP we discussed about QT interval QRS complex now we will discuss supraventricular tachycardia what basically is supraventricular tachycardia see tachycardia arising from above the ventricles is supraventricular tachycardia and it has main four types see atrial fibrillation is supraventricular tachycardia atrial flutter is supraventricular tachycardia paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia and wolf parkinson white syndrome now paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia is very similar to wolf parkinson white syndrome here also there is problem in re-entry phenomenon okay see what is basically re-entry phenomenon see in both paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia and when, uh, wolf parkinson white syndrome see let's say this is sa node okay this is av node obviously there are multiple pathways but for simplicity we are using it and here is the Purkinje fibers going okay so action potential will come from SA node to AV node and then to Purkinje fibers in the ventricle. Now there are some accessory pathway which takes impulses directly means they bypass the AV node okay and when they bypass the AV node the speed will be increased okay means the speed of action potential is more and it will come back from here okay or it can come back from here. This will result in re-entry of the action potential and this circuit will result in arrhythmia okay keep it simple don't overthink on this so again paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia and wolf parkinson white syndrome both are due to re-entry phenomenon okay occurring due to accessory pathway occurring due to accessory pathway that was about supraventricular tachycardia now what is re-entry obviously see you have seen this diagram a lot of time i know but see see normally when the impulse come it goes on this side and on this side but if one side of of the way is blocked then the impulse coming from here will go this side and it will again form a circular loop they will enter here and when they form a circular loop it's kind of a short 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 circuit here see and this will result in arrhythmias okay so that is re-entry phenomenon in simple words now another confusing term for everyone is use dependence and reverse use dependence see what is use dependence see use dependence means if the heart rate increases okay and with increased heart rate the effect of drug increases see if the heart rate increases and with increased in heart rate if the effect of drug increases then it is called use dependence and if the heart rate increases 
but with increase in heart rate the effect of drug decreases okay if the effect of drug decreases then it is called reverse use dependence again use dependence means with increase in heart rate the effect of the drug will increase and reverse use dependence with increase in heart rate the effect of drug will decrease this is use dependence and reverse use dependence now let's try to understand how is it and what is it see okay let me draw it here see use dependence is seen with sodium channel blockers and reverse use dependence is in with potassium channel blockers and why is it so see uh, see I remember it like this let's consider that uh, sodium channel blockers okay they are fishermen fishermen okay and depolarization depolarization is the fish okay now if in a pond or a lake if there are more fish okay if there are more fish in the pond the fisherman will do more work obviously it will do more more work and it will be more productive in the same way if the heart rate increases okay if the heart rate is increasing it means the cell are depolarized they are depolarizing rapidly if the heart rate is increasing the cell are depolarizing rapidly so whenever the heart rate increases the depolarization increases so depolarization is like fish if you have more fish the fisherman will do more work and it uh, the fisherman will be more productive in the same way if you will have more depolarization the sodium channel blockers will do more work okay and they will show use dependence okay so in simple words when there is increased heart rate the cell are depolarized okay they are rapidly depolarizes depolarizing so the drug which acts on the depolarizing phase will show more effect while the drug that are working on the repolarization phase will show decreased effect that's why potassium channel blocker they show reverse use dependence with increase in heart rate while sodium channel blocker they show uh, use dependence now do not overthink on this topic if you have understood what I said then I think it's important I uh, means it's enough to know for the exam this is sometimes confusing but if you remember this then it will be easy for you now let's discuss the few high points in the end see the drugs which cause SLE the answer will be procainamide another important drugs are isoniazid okay isoniazid and hydralazine hydralazine you can remember like that hip okay HIP Ob obviously there are more drug but these are the one that you need to remember for step one now increasing uh, increase in action potential duration and QT interval we, di we discussed any drug that works on the potassium channel will increase the action potential duration and QT interval so they are class 3 and class 1a post MI give class 1b the drug that are contraindicated post MI class 1 C C for contraindication now if the patient is taking amiodarone what precautions should you take see so you should always check the ECG of the person you should check liver function test you should check thyroid function test you should check pulmonary function test and you should also check electrolyte abnormalities in that patient now these are these are obviously given in first aid so we are discussing it quickly now this is very very classic question if a patient is having prolonged PR interval prolonged PR interval which drug are contraindicated and the answer is beta blockers and calcium channel blockers because both of them work on AV node and if they block the AV node they will they will affect the PR interval means they will prolong the PR interval to 